Good everyone, I hope you guys have an amazing day. So what I will do today, I will talk about data to model. And now you must be wondering, data to model, that's interesting. Um, so in, in the world of machine learning, right, in the world of artificial intelligence, you usually deal with a lot of data, right? And obviously, a raw data is not good enough to make any sort of prediction out of it, right? You need to fine tune your data and then once the data is ready you need to know which model to use to get the expected output right so i'm going to explain uh on that terms today i'm not going to go into the details nitty-gritty stuff of machine learning but i just wanted to uh touch upon two important uh concepts uh when you deal with model one is the supervised model and another one is the unsupervised model because it's important for you to know, even if you are not a machine learning engineer, even if you are not an AI engineer or a deep learning engineer, if you're learning this uh, this aspect of AI, even to navigate uh, things in Salesforce, it's still good to know uh, the few uh, key concepts, right? So uh, super supervised learning, and I'll show you how we can convert a data into model or which model we can use, right? I just wanted to explain using a simple example, and that will become more clear. And unsupervised learning. So so when we talk about the model, right, obviously the, the word learning comes into picture. Now, why do we use the word learning? Because you're actually telling model to learn from the data. Uh, you feed in, right? For instance, I wanted to calculate uh, the house prices, right? Which an example I'll be looking at uh, in a minute. So based on the few input you, you provide to the model and the model will uh, figure out based on the training data you provide. For instance, I wanted to give, uh, predict the house price of say, a three uh, bedroom, um, right? And I, provided my model with two bedroom house price and 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 say you know five bedroom house price and single bedroom house price so based on that input my model will work out a probabilistic figure what will be the the price of say three bedroom house or four bedroom house so that can be done using supervised learning now in supervised learning what happens is you have a label data set when I talk about data set, I mean inputs, right? Input, like I said, the, the you know, the um, the number of bedrooms, right? The, the square feet, uh, the, the distance from the city. So these are the input and output is uh, the price, right? So in this case, right, you provide the model with the input data as well as the output data. So that's how you train it. Let's say I wanted to provide the model, say this is the... These are the configuration of the house I'm looking for. This is the price. This is the configuration of the house I'm looking for, and this is a price. The next time you provide the configuration of the house, the model will predict, oh, this might be the house price, right? So that's the supervised learning. Now, in unsupervised learning, you will not have any label data set, right? Say, you know, um, for instance, uh, uh, you know, if you wanted to classify something um, into a group, in, in the form of a cluster, right? So uh, that you can uh, use unsupervised learning. Um, so one of the uh, the most common, I'm not going to discuss detail into the unsupervised. Unsupervised learning, in simple terms, you don't have a labeled data set. You have a bunch of data, and there is no label associated with it. So model will figure out, based on the data you provide, it will group them into a cluster to say, hey, oh, this group belongs to this. And for instance, email spam, right? So you provide, uh, you know, a model with lots of, you know, emails. And let's say out of which 18, let's say you provided the uh, model with, say, 20 emails, right? And out of which 15 are scam, uh, spam. So those 15 it will categorize into spam folder. And rest of the five will categorize into non-spam. Or other example, if it's not a really great one, is the news article, right? So, for instance, 
you have like thousands of news, right? And out of thousands of news, few will be in the sports, few will be in in entertainment. Um, though sports and entertainment can be categorized into one, but uh, that's besides the point. Let's, for the sake of argument, entertainment, let's say Hollywood movies and uh, the showbiz stuff, right? And, um, and rest of the news could be of technology, right? So you provide the raw data to the model, and the model will cluster into, say, a war, sorry, uh, a technology news, uh, and it will cluster into a showbiz news or a sports news. So there is a very commonly used uh, algorithm that's a K mean clustering, which is a, a part of an unsupervised learning. I'm not going to get into the details uh, because this is just the basic uh, interaction. And when it comes to supervised, we have classification and regression. Classification I briefly touched upon in my yesterday's uh, episode where I talked about the cancer uh, example, right? Well, radiologist, uh, you know, not radio radiologist, right? For instance, you have a tumor data, right? Tumor size, tumor growth, dimensions, or whatnot, right? And based on that, you classify if it is a, a cancer tumor or non-cancer tumor. That can be classified as a classification model. Now, I wanted to talk about a, a regression problem, right? But to, to work out the house price. So that's we have a data, and now how are we going to use the data to model it? So that's my whole idea today to talk about data to model, right? Okay. So we have few, like I said, if you remember uh, what I mentioned about supervised, we have a label data set, okay? So label data set, we have a um, number of, of rooms, right? Uh, then we have... Square feet, right? Then we have distance from city center. Let's say I have three input uh, data and I wanted to uh, work out the house price, right? Okay. So we have number of rooms, square feet, and distance from a city, right? And I'll put it as a supervised learning, and output is is the price, right, for the house. So what happens is you pass these are the input uh, which this model will take and will give you the output, right? So that's how the modeling works. So this is the training model. So this is the model you will expose your training set. So let's start with the number one. So number of rooms, yeah? Let's say four, yeah? Square feet, let's say, you know, 1,000. Uh, um, okay, let's say 700 square feet, okay? Distance from a city, one kilometer. Well, sorry, we I don't measure in miles. I'm not an American, so I live in New Zealand. We don't follow that convention, so. Um, uh, maybe 1.5. Uh, miles, uh, I don't know how to calculate, you can Google it. Um, so one kilometer, uh, this is pretty cool. Let's say the house price is uh, 1 million, right? Well, you won't get this for 1 million in Auckland. It might go more than 2 million. But anyway, this is just a sample data, okay? Now we talk about, let's say, uh, now, you trained this model with this information. Four bedrooms, uh, 700 square feet, uh, one kilometer distance from city, price is one million. Very simple data set. I mean, can't really calculate based on this info, but just for the sake of argument, let's say we got two this, uh, three uh, labeled data set, and I'm, I'm training my model based on this three, and I'm expecting you know price to be one million. Now, let's talk about two. And the square feet, let's say, um, I'm talking about, um, say, 250, right? 250, and the distance is the same, right? Okay, so now two-bedroom house, 250 square feet, uh, one same distance from the city, like one, and the house price is, say, 200K, right? 200,000, right? 300,000 dollars. New Zealand dollars, right? You can say American dollar, whatever. Um, 
then I train this data with say five bedroom house, uh, 700 same square feet. Distance from a city center is like 200 meters, right? And the price of the house is 1.6 million, right? Okay. Right. Now we trained this model using this information, which is great. Now let's say, hypothetical scenario, I want to estimate the price of, say, a three bedroom house, right? So I provide my training model with, say, three. Uh, and I will say, you know, 500. Yeah, uh, the square feet. And the distance from a city center, let's say, 750 meters, right? Okay, now this model should be smart enough to to work out a probabil probabilistic figure. Let's say it worked out to be 750K, yeah? Right, 750K. Uh, so, yeah, it could be right, it may not be right, but it's, it's not very accurate. I would say it's a probabilistic. Or let's say the model is not good enough. You say, oh, okay. This is not good enough. There is a huge difference. This is not what I'm expecting. Let's say you're expecting 850 and it's the model predicted. So you need to train your model with more and more data. And so let's say you are expecting uh, 700, uh, sorry, 850 and now we go 750. So there is a loss of 100K. So that information needs to be fed back and, and you train your model in a better way. So uh, in a nutshell, this is how you map your, you can, you know, you take the data to model. You have a data, you want it to work out the model uh, so that you get the desired output. So I give you a very simple linear regression model, very, very basic one. This is, there are a lot of equ there equation involved. There's a loss function involved. I just don't want it to get into those ones because then what will happen is this will become a machine learning course. It's not a machine learning course. It's just to make you guys understand the simple aspect of AI, which you can use in Salesforce to make an informed decision in terms of ethics and compliance. But it's good to know certain terminology. So that's the reason why I'm covering this, right? So at the end of the day, right, what I've described, it's just an algorithms, right? It's just a few bunch of steps. But that being said, you know, in, in, back in the days right you have to hard code your logic hard code in the sense you have to write your business logic in your code so that algorithms behave the way you expect but what happens if you have let's say thousands of edge case scenarios it becomes very difficult to code everything right so that's the reason why we have this model which ensure that computer or algorithm learns from the data right it's like a learning process so algorithms are smart enough to pick it up the information and figure out, okay, I got this data, so it must be this. I got this data, must be this. Let me work out, right? Instead of human training the model, uh, hard coding the model, the, tr the model will predict uh, based on the training data you uh, supply the model with, right? So that's a shift of mind. Uh, it's a change of mind uh, thinking process, right? Uh, so it's not like a usual way to code because people will think, okay, what is machine learning? I can write 50 rules to it. That's not a machine learning. Machine learning is not like where you hard coding every business scenarios. That's absolutely not a machine learning. That's a rule based learning. So the machine learning is where the machine learns from the data, right? So more data you provide, the more it gets trained and more it will be capable of making a right predictions. So that's the machine learning in a nutshell. Um, so that's pretty much I wanted to cover in today's episode. So like I said, right, I, I don't want it to go into too detail, but I just want you to guys to understand, to get excited about what we are covering. Uh, we're going to get into uh, different topics over the course of time. Um, so yeah, that being said, I hope you guys have an amazing evening. Adios.